So isotopes, let's start talking about isotopes and what we uh, know about isotopes. So this is going way back in Gen Chem 1. Okay, so of course, um, a couple of numbers are going to be important when we start talking about isotopes. There is a mass number and an atomic number. So iodine-131 has 53, 131. What is 53 for iodine? Is that the mass number or the atomic number? The atomic number. And what is that equal to? The what? Number of protons? The atomic number is equal to the number of protons. And remember, that's what makes an element an element. Right? Every iodine atom has 53 protons no matter what. Okay. The mass number, probably the other number, 131 is iodine's mass number for this isotope. And uh, what did that equal? Protons plus, neutrons. protons plus neutrons, good. So the protons and neutrons, the sum of the protons and neutrons is the mass number. So how many uh, neutrons does iodine-131 have? 78. 78? Okay, I'll take your word for it. So protons equals uh, 53, neutrons 78. And that's what uh, sets up the idea of isotopes. Remember that each element can have different numbers of neutrons, and that's what gives uh, different isotopes. So um, like carbon, carbon has six protons. Most carbon atoms have six neutrons, so that's carbon-12. Some have seven Neutrons, so that's carbon-13. Some have eight, that's carbon-14. All right, and so that's how we talk about isotopes as well. We re generally don't have to worry about the atomic number. That's always constant, and once you have your handy-dandy periodic table, you can always look at it to figure out the atomic number. What you want to specify usually is the mass number because that's what can change. So we would write, you know, we could say iodine, then dash, and then it's mass number, iodine-131. Or you can use this symbol, just I-131. That's how we would refer to these isotopes.